I get frustration from a certain perspective. The iPhone 16 Pro Max looks the same as the iPhone 15 Pro Max, but after spending a week or so with Apple's newest iOS phone, I can assure you that there are significant and noticeable differences, including some that will forever change the way you use an iPhone. First, this phone is bigger, the titanium body is slightly larger and 6 grams heavier than the iPhone 15 Pro Max. The screen is a hair's breadth away from 7 inches, but the Super Retina XDR OLED screen is larger not just because of the chassis. Apple slimmed down the bezels on the iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max to give you a giant 6.9 inch canvas of bright colorful pixels. The other major differences is a new button on the right side below the power or a sleep or Siri button. Apple would prefer that we do not call it a button, though it is in part 1. You can press the recessed camera control button down and it moves but it also has a haptic response that makes light presses feel like the button is moving, it even includes gesture recognition. While the new button's name and its primary utility speak to photographic pursuits, this is a customizable control that will soon offer one press access to Apple's new visual intelligence object identification feature. On the inside of the iPhone 16 Pro Max is a faster and more efficient A18 Pro, it's not hugely different from the A17 Pro that came before it, and most customers will never tap into its true power, but it's clear to me that Apple's Pro line of smartphones are more than ready to live up to their names. If there was ever a pocket supercomputer, the iPhone 16 Pro Max might just be it. All this hardware is in some ways no more than a vessel for Apple's next big thing, Apple Intelligence. However, Apple's own take on AI is also the greatest source of frustration, as it's far from complete. In fact, early iPhone 16 customers won't see much of it at all unless they install an iOS beta, features like writing tools, a prettier and somewhat smarter Siri, summaries of long emails and photos updates such as creating your own memories based on a prompt should show up soon after the iPhone 16 Pro Max starts shipping but other features are essentially to come. There is no image generation, Genemojis, ChatGPT integration or support for languages other than English and Siri has yet to display any of its existing personal context capabilities which might be Apple's secret weapon when it comes to winning the AI battle. Siri with Apple intelligence will eventually be able to use what it knows about you know from all your information on the phone to better help you get answers and get things done. All of this might show up this year or it might be next year and that fact puts a little damper on my iPhone 16 Pro Max enthusiasm. If you are not buying this new iPhone for Apple intelligence, then allow me to direct your attention to the formidable camera array. While it's not entirely new, there is a new and faster sensor behind the 48 megapixel main fusion camera and the ultrawide makes a leap from 12 megapixel to 48 megapixel. The 5x optical zoom is mostly unchanged, as is the 12 megapixel true depth selfie camera. There are, however, myriad new imaging and even audio tricks that I'm certain every iPhone 16 Pro Max owners will love. There's 4K 120fps videography that can, via a new speed tool, be stopped down in increments to give your videos a truly cinematic feel. There are also new audio mix tools that, in certain environments, can add studio quality to audio that wasn't kept with a microphone. Apple has also added some new image styles and undertone controls that I'm not sure will get as much use as Apple would prefer. If you are asked to me, the choice between the base iPhone 16 and the iPhone 16 Pro Max is simple. You gain a ProMotion display, a 5x zoom camera and Apple's most powerful mobile chip. The differences between the iPhone 16 Pro and 16 Pro Max however are more subtle this year. There's the screen size 6.3 vs 6.9 inches and the battery size which results in at least an hour of extra battery life and that's essentially it. The 5x tetra prism lens is now on both phones, perhaps the only other notable difference is that iPhone 16 Pro gets starts with only 128 GB of storage. In short, I love the iPhone 16 Pro Max, it is big, powerful and up for everything. Yes, I was playing a console level game on it using 
an Xbox controller because I can. It takes lovely photos that, even if you choose not to try out, the new styles and undertones are clear and color accurate. Apple Intelligence, which I accessed by installing iOS 18.1 developer beta, is a nice start with some cool features, but it's not yet a compelling reason to upgrade. I feel similarly about the camera control button. Don't get me wrong, I like the new button and I think it's full of untapped potential, but there's almost a bit of competition now between the one-year-old action button and this new, arguably more sophisticated one. Those who buy any of the new iPhone 16 models will probably get a lot of use out of the camera control button and wonder how they used their iPhone without it. In the meantime, the action button might sit unused until Apple eventually shows it the door. It might seem like Apple's phone design strategy is now why mess with a good thing. In some ways, that's true, the iPhone 16 Pro Max doesn't stray far from the aesthetic first established with the iPhone 12 but also carries forward the myriad challenge made over the last few generations like the smoothed out edges and new action button which replaced the silent switch on the Pro models last year. Its dimensions are close to those to the iPhone 15 Pro Max but enlarged by a few millimeters here and there. The 16 Pro Max is 163mm by 77.6mm by 8.25mm and weighs 227 grams. That's 6 grams heavier, 3.1 mm taller, and 0.9 mm wider than the iPhone 15 Pro Max. If you are comfortable holding and using the iPhone 15 Pro Max, I suspect you will have no trouble with the iPhone 16 Pro Max. I can't say the new phone feels substantially larger in my hand, but I do notice the difference in screen size. The bottom edge features microphone and speaker perforations, along with a USB C port that, with the right cable, can support Thunderbolt 4 data transfer speeds. There's also a speaker slot along the very top edge of the display together with the bottom edge speaker. This phone can produce undistorted room feeling sound, highs are sharp, mids are strong and bass is good for the device size. Button placement is mostly identical to last year with the volume buttons and action button on one side and the larger power or sleep or CD button on the other side. They are joined, however, by a new button, camera control, roughly the same size as the power button. The camera control button is a multi-purpose control that can recognize physical presses and lighter presses to enable haptic response and gestures. It offers instant access to the camera and with those other presses and gestures to various virtual millimeter lenses and camera settings. The materials and build quality are once again excellent. Apple used grade 5 titanium on the body over a graphite clad aluminium substructure. Apple has also upgraded its ceramic shield, which may make it less susceptible to cracks and scratches, although I was quite careful with my 1TB desert titanium test unit, so I can't say for certain if this is the case. Okay, I did get it wet, purposely running the IP68 rated iPhone 16 Pro Max under a garden sprinkler. It was fun to watch the screen activating as it was touched by a thousand tiny fingers when it was just water droplets, but the phone was otherwise unmoved and unharmed by the deluge. Sometimes I wonder how Apple might say its next screen technology will it add duper to it so it becomes super duper retina exit display i mean it may have boxed itself into a corner but apple skirted the issue this year by a leaving its iphone display technology pretty much untouched this is a giant screen 6.9 inches achieved through a combination of a slightly larger chassis and pleasingly thinner bezel. There are more pixels than last year. The iPhone 16 Pro Max screen is 2868 by 1320, while the iPhone 15 Pro Max is 2796 by 1290. There's more pixels but not a higher density. This is still 460 ppi and so falls behind the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra's QHD Plus display at least on the ppi front. Apple also didn't mess with the dynamic island, which remains a useful and fungible information pill in the upper portion of the screen. It houses Face ID, depth sensors, and a 12 megapixel true depth camera. The camera takes excellent selfies and is my go 
to for biometric unlocking. While the display score specs haven't changed, they are worth toting. It's a white color gamut screen that supports HDR True Tone always on display, means you can see a less saturated version of your lock screen without unlocking the phone, 2000 nits of peak brightness outdoors, and ProMotion. Speaking of which, everything I did on the iPhone 16 Pro Max looked fantastic. I don't even notice the dynamic island when it's inside one of my games and streaming videos via the live likes of Netflix stands to crop out the cutout. I know everyone wants to talk about Apple intelligence, but it's the changes to the core iOS 18 platform that will have the biggest impact on your iPhone 16 Pro Max day-to-day -day use. Photos, for instance, has gotten a huge overhaul and one that I'm not entirely sure makes it better. It's the situation of who moved my cheese. As many of your core features may have shifted or been replaced, the Photos app now defaults to search and collections, which might throw people who are expecting to see their photo library. Still, if they get used to using search for some natural language queries that yield useful image results, they might be pleasantly surprised. The iOS interface is now more customizable and if you want, you can leave spaces in your app grids. You still can't place an app icon in a space that, say, straddles two spaces in the invisible grid, but I think people will appreciate this new level of flexibility. Apple seems a bit obsessed with summarization. Summaries exist in writing tools and in the new Safari, which has a slightly hidden highlights feature. Look for a tiny hamburger menu on the left side of the address bar. You can use that to turn it on and it will take, for example, a lengthy New Yorker article about Ronald Reagan and condense the thousands of words into a paragraph summary impressive. So, I worry that such a boil down might leave out important nonces. There's even a new passwords app that consolidates and surfaces all the password feature app has previously hidden in features like Keychain. Now you have an easy to access app to manage sometimes confusing password and security word. One of my favorite new iOS 18 features is Math Notes. Inside Notes, you can scribble any question and when you put an equal sign at the end of it, Math Notes automatically solves it and writes the answer in what will look just like your own penmanship. It's a smart bit of machine learning. None of this is as sexy as Apple intelligence, but this and the myriad of other changes coming with iOS 18 might be more readily practical than what you can currently do with Apple's AI efforts. Apple's 13-year-old digital assistant has burst out of its floating bubble and now when you summon it, takes over the whole screen. I switched between calling Siri by name and using a long press on the power button to call it and each time, the entire screen was encased in a beautiful multicolor glow. The display almost appears to flex when you press that button and when you make your request, the screen pulses in response. Siri really seems more alive than ever. This, too, might be the most exciting part of the update Apple intelligence features that give Siri access to information about you on the phone to make its responses more contextually relevant are not here yet, nor are app insights that might help dig into applications to enable features and actions. Instead, we get a Siri that is somewhat better at handling the us and ums that sometimes happens when you are trying to craft a Siri prompt. I found that Siri can understand some confused talk, although if you are nearly incoherent, Siri will be lost too. Siri did well on some question and was effective at opening the FaceTime camera when I said I wanted to take a selfie. It also did well when I asked how I could share my Wi-Fi password, returning a concise step-by-step -step guide. One other nice Siri update is the text to Siri. All it takes is three taps on the bottom of the screen to open a Siri window in which you can type in your prompt. It's a nice, discreet way of getting the answer or help you need. Writing tools which you can find when you type 
text in notes, emails, or messages offers to make your writing better in a variety of ways. I am a confident writer and communicator in email and messaging, so AI assistance in these tasks doesn't appeal to me. There are two millions who feel otherwise and may find these tools useful. I noticed how while well writing tools offers to make your text more professional, concise, and friendly, it does a stellar job of never losing a misconstructing the meaning of your original text. Photos is where Apple intelligence shines. The new cleanup option in Edit is effective at removing unwanted objects from phone. When I opened a photo and tapped the cleanup eraser icon, it immediately offered a remove a few people from the background of my photo. I wanted to keep them, so I chose choose an object I wanted to remove drawing over it. Precision is not a necessity. I drew over parts of it and clean up identified the complete object. When I took a picture of my wife at an outdoor restaurant, I noticed that you could still see all the cars parked behind her. I used cleanup to remove them one by one. It did a good job. In all, Apple intelligence shows early promise but compared Google Gemini and Galaxy AI, it seems a bit limited. Siri still doesn't have that open LLM feel where you could ask it almost any question or solve any problem. There is no AI image generation, not even the promised Gen emojis. It's still an English only tool, and the promised third party integration with ChatGPT and potentially Gemini have yet to materialize. It's a good effort, but this version of Apple Intelligence is not the one that will spark a billion upgrades. While Apple hasn't radically changed the iPhone's camera array, there are enough changes in hardware, software, and image processing, along with the aforementioned camera control button to make the imaging system feel fresh and new. On paper, we have just one notable megapixel upgrade, the 48 megapixel ultra wide camera, which will not only improve wide angle shots but has a measurable impact on macro quality. Still, even though Apple didn't squeeze a much higher pixel count into the main camera, it did upgrade the sensor and is promising much faster shutter speeds. And the autofocus is now enhanced with dual autofocus sensors. These are the kinds of incremental changes that should improve both the experience of using the quality delivered by the main camera sensor, but they are also hard to measure. More on that in a bit. The 12 megapixel 5x optical zoom is essentially unchanged from last year's iPhone 15 Pro Max. The biggest news here is found not on this phone but on its little brother, the iPhone 16 Pro, which also gets the Tetra Prism lens. Last year's Pro model was stuck with a just 3x optical zoom camera. Similarly, unchanged is the 12 megapixel FaceTime camera on the front. Here are some camera samples of iPhone 16 Pro Max. By every metric, the iPhone 16 Pro Max's new A18 Pro SoC is a beast. It outperforms the A17 Pro and Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 in most benchmarks. While Apple isn't backing the CPU with as much memory as you might find in, for instance, a Google Pixel 9 or Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, the iPhone 16 Pro Max and its A18 Pro chip make good use of the 8GB it has. 
that the iPhone 16 Pro Max is essentially a mini computer in your pocket should surprise no one. Apple Silicon has provided ample power for everything from everyday productivity tasks to 4K video editing and AAA console gaming. The A18 Pro is no different, but in this case, we have an even larger canvas on which to enjoy its benefits. I'm not sure I could find a task this phone couldn't handle. If I have one criticism, it's that the phone does seem to get a bit warm during, for instance, gameplay and video editing in CapCut. I don't know if this is the graphite covered aluminum substructure more efficiently delivering heat from the chip to the body or the phone overworking the good news is that this does not adversely impact performance or battery life call quality was good and i am pleased to see that this is a now a future leaning platform with wi-fi 7 support there's also bluetooth 5.3 support and second generation ultra wideband it helps in my find my app which i used when i purposely misplaced my new airports 4. in the us the iphone is now eSIM only which i like although some people miss the physical SIM card. I appreciate the ease of switching eSIMs from one phone to other and how easily the iPhone 16 Pro Max lets you switch between multiple eSIM numbers on the iPhone 16. The iPhone 16 Pro Max delivered some of the best future labs battery train results I have seen. We got an average 16 hours of battery life on our tests and anecdotally I saw between 14 and 17 hours depending on activity. That's impressive. Apple is finally supporting QI2 wireless charging technology and provided me with a new QI2 supporting MagSafe charger and a 30W charge adapter. The iPhone 16 lineup ships with a 60W capable USB-C cable but no charging adapter. Using those two accessories, I recharged the iPhone 16 Pro Max at 44% in 30 minutes. Apple claimed 50% in 30 minutes, so this is pretty close. A full charge took about 2 hours. One thing not a lot of people know is that with a standard USB-C cable, you can charge your AirPods or Apple Watch of the iPhone. The iPhone 16 Pro Max have everything we have come to expect in a year-over-year -year upgrade even without Apple intelligence. The 6.9-inch iPhone 16 Pro Max have a slew of upgrades including a good battery life, outstanding photo and video chops and iOS 18. The iPhone 16 Pro Max are excellent phones worthy of a spot in your pocket if you can afford them.